um, what we are going to do is we are going to explore most of the functionalities in a demo mode, but we want you to see as well what do we do in the server for the things to look the way they look uh, in the app. And, uh, yeah. and, um, and it will be me at the beginning and then Jose. So we are going to be covering all these aspects that you can see uh, on the screen. Uh, however, we are not really going to be following all details in this presentation. This presentation has all the theory that we presented in the last academy, in the last Implementers Android Academy. So it's too much. We actually want you to have this as a reference and we will share it uh, maybe using the event with all those that, uh, that joined uh, afterwards. We should have said it before. Um, so don't worry if we keep jumping here and there is because we want you to keep this as a material, as a reference. So uh, we are gonna make a first a general intro uh, to the Android app. And for the questions, uh, please use the chat and Jose will be following the chat while I am speaking and I will do uh, the opposite when, when we go to his part from program rules. And we will try to answer the easy questions in the chat or open for questions uh, here when we break or, or if there is any relevant question because I interrupt me. Not relevant, like that is worth it to mention. All are relevant. So no, this is just a, a slide to, to remember that it's important to configure the Android user with the minimum permissions and the minimum access using sharing settings and the capture or units uh, because that is going to, sorry, I'm gonna close this, but a lot of sun here because that is getting, uh, that is setting the volume of the sync for data and metadata. So, and also for security principles, but in practice also for data and metadata. So you have this in the slides. One thing I wanted to mention before going to the app is that you are seeing the app now uh, in blue, but you can change the, the generic color of the app by using the colors of the server. So if you go to the system settings, there is one setting that we don't use much anymore in web. If we go to appearance, make this a bit bigger, which is the style. So we can change that to different colors. My, Myanmar is red, light blue is light blue, India is orange and green is obviously green. And you can also change the flag. So if you assign a flag and you assign a color, all the look and feel of the app, the default color of the app will be the one that you put in style. So I, I didn't wanna do a full login now. Yeah, so I'm gonna launch this one and you are gonna see also the login with the QR code now. And, and I will use the other one for the demo. Mobile. So at the same time, I'm, I'm showing you here the way we try to facilitate the login. So, so it's through the QR code reader instead of typing. And then also the next time the user logs in, the next time the user logs in, um, the user, the username will remain and the URL. So only the password has to be entered. And, and then, okay, let's move to the other one. So we don't wait for this. And then we'll see later. And then uh, you can also use the fingerprint if the, if, the, the, if the mobile phone allows for it. And uh, the last thing is the pin code. The user can set a pin four digit pin number, pin code. And the next time he wants to log in, it will be the, the pin enter will be prompted instead of the whole, um, instead of the whole login. Let's see how this goes. Oh, that was the wrong server. Okay, no worries, we don't need to do that. But just to say that you can configure the color and you have different options for logging in and for facilitating the login for your, for your users. Um, 
one thing about the colors that I want to say before jumping here, the icons, there are icons everywhere. So let's have a look at that. You see now everything is blue and with the default icon, but we can play with that in maintenance. So let's put some color to this app. For instance, we have here a data set. So it's just about assigning one color and one icon. everywhere. So this is the data set. Okay. And now our programs is getting a bit slow. Mm -hmm. instance and let's put uh, one here this one can be blue i'm choosing different aspects so that we see how they look mm -hmm. now the port of entry can be And I think that's the one. No, I probably this one. Okay. Okay. That one can be this one. And I really like the record. I want to use it somewhere. Okay. So when we synchronize now our metadata, and Jose will tell us more later about this. So this is how the icons apply. Oh, I did not, I added one here, I didn't say. Probably this one didn't say. So this is how the icons and colors look. This is the positive, this was the negative, didn't load, and this is, these are the outlines. And then once we enter each one of these programs, the whole app takes that color for all the actions. So you can configure the default color of the app at server level, and then the program colors at each program or data set level. So the home, the home screen or the home page, what is showing is all the programs, either event or tracker or data sets that, um, that are configured for this specific user as can capture and view or can view only. The user can also have the can view only permission and the program will come here. And, and then it has to be assigned to the capture or search or unit as well to be listed. Um, this is as a reference. We are, we will, you will see these icons uh, all over the app. These ones are for the sync status. When you don't see any icon, it means this data is synced with the server. And these ones are for the event, uh, <clears throat> the status of events. So this is overdue, open, complete. And if the icons have a little eye, like this one, means they are only editable. The, the user, sorry, they are only readable. The user can read them, but cannot edit them for different reasons. Sharing settings is expired or yeah, mainly those. So we are gonna go through the three models, let's say data sets, events and, and tracker programs. And we are gonna enter one record on each and, and see what is happening at each step on the, also checking the server configuration. So if we start with the data sets, what we have here is a list of the data sets that have been already reported with the date and the reporting org unit. To add a new data set, to add new events, uh, programs, track entities, 
everywhere. There is always this uh, fab button here in the bottom right corner. So this is common and this screen is also common. So it's asking for another unit because my user has two. If it only had one, it will be pre-selected. And then let's enter for today. Okay. So this is the um, yeah, here. So what is this? We have here in the, it will always open in the first table. So what you see here as tabs, these are actually the sections in the in the data set. So this is how we render the sections. These little arrows will allow you to play with the width of the, of the first column, whatever works better for, for the visualization you are making. And then this is how you navigate the table in each one of them. If you have more tables, they will come below inside each section. If there is no section, the, this tab will say data and it will just put one table uh, below the other. And then there is always a first tab with the um, period, the, re, the reporting period, the reporting org unit and the status of the, of the data set. In this case, it's either open or complete. So um, if it was complete, you can reopen from here. The, now it's not offering the option because it's open. So I think, yes, we can enter a few cases and see one example, um, because I want to show you the validation rules. Validation rules are supported in uh, data entry. So, okay, so the values are saved, fine, thank you. But now when I save, it's asking me, oh, do you want to check quality? Yes, I want. So it's telling me that I have one error. What has happened now? The thing is that this data set does not have the complete only if validation passes, meaning the validation is optional. That's why we are asking uh, the user. If it was ticked, it would have been triggered automatically when the user says. And, and what we are seeing here, this is the error message. We are trying to help the user understand what is the problem? Why there is an error? So I want to show you this validation rule. So what we are displaying here is the description. So it's good to have informative descriptions and then the instructions. So we are saying the number of patients hospitalized cannot be higher, for example. Please review your numbers in the case tested and hospitalized tab. So this is these are the instructions and then this, these are the left and right components that we are asking the user. You should review this. So now we can fix it. Um, now I, you want to, ah, okay, now it's checking again. You want to check data quality? Yes. And now it's telling me, okay, everything looks good. So the flow will be different based on if we have uh, configured the validation rules as mandatory or not. Mm -hmm. I think this is all about data sets and I will leave you here this diagram with the flow and how the flow is when it's mandatory and when it's not mandatory based on this tick for the user. So let's move to an event program. Events pro event programs, you can recognize them because they have the event um, the event word here. So the data sets say data sets. The tracker programs have the name of the tracked entity type, so in this case, person, area, or persons. And the events have the event uh, word there. So let's register one event. Let's open the program. So you see similar, it's a list with a reporting the event date in this case and the reporting org unit. And here we are using the icon for the status. This one is complete. This one is open. To create a new event, the events are by default uh, putting the date of today in, in the event date, but it can be changed. So I want you to, to pay attention during this data entry to the rendering types. I'm, I'm gonna be talking about rendering types. So the first variation that we have is for the dates. You can pick the date here with this spinner or you can put the calendar view in case it's more comfortable or intuitive. The user can choose 
for, for long dates in the past, it's, it's more comfortable to use the guide. Okay, and then the same, the old unit, because I have two, is not pre-populated. And this is the data entry screen. So, yeah, it's asking for the different fields. This is a drop down or uh, sorry, this is a radio button. So you will see later why are we seeing here radio buttons instead of a drop down. Then the edge, sorry, let's go one by one. The edge, okay. And then we move to the details. So in this case, uh, as you see, we have horizontal checkboxes, vertical checkboxes, we have program rules applying. So this one is, it was hiding. Now it's not hiding anymore and it's assigning a value. This would be a regular drop down, for instance, which is not a radio button or a checkbox. And then I want to show you also the last one. So this one is showing each option in a drop down in an option set uh, with color and with an icon. So let's have a look at the server and see how uh, these different visualizations have been configured. The What you are seeing here from one to seven are the sections. These are the different sections and we can open one section at a time. And this completion spinner here, it's gonna be adding, I mean, it's gonna, it's respecting the program rules and, and it will keep on completing until, until the 100%. So let's look at this program in the server. Why does it look like this? So the rendering types, the, the different visualizations that we want to give uh, in the data entry for the user experience are configured at program level and are configured where we assign the data elements. So in the, all the attributes, in this case, it's an event program, it is here. For a tracker program, it will be in the program stage for the data elements or in the attributes for the enrollment details. So you can see here how sex is horizontal radio buttons. These ones. Case severity, horizontal check boxes. This is the case severity. Lab test, vertical check boxes. Right, so this is how you, you change this and you can configure based on what is more comfortable depending on the configuration. But now what about the colorful one? To configure this one, we have to make a few more steps. So the first thing is that this is an option set. So we have to assign colors and icons to the option set. So let's have a look at our option set. If we go to the options, you can see how we have added a color and an icon to each one of them. So this is the first step. You need the option set configured with colors and icons. And then in the program, you need to put one data element uh, per section. So if you want manual like visual data entry you need to put one data element on each section so let's have a look at our section there are three 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 steps we need to make this is the section outcome so we have the option set with icons and colors we have one section with one data element and we configure the rendering type of the section this one is sequential we change it to matrix for instance date and say let's I didn't say. Let's sync again. And see what happens. I'm waiting for this to update because I don't have notification. Yes. So if we put if we Go oh, now to the outcome. This is the other view. We have selected matrix now. So this is how it looks in the matrix. And it's up to you to, to choose what looks better for the text that you have, for the number of options that you have. So this is what I wanted to tell you about rendering options and event programs. Of course, I can say, 
finish and and I don't think we have much to say. The details of the event can be edited here as well, in case you need to. And we can move to the next section. So you, you have here in the presentation now all the information about the um, visual configurations. This is just to tell you that the icons are already in the in the app in the APK. So using more icons and more colors is not uh, increasing the size of your of your traffic of the metadata. So you can use them without worrying for that. You have a table here of where are the icons available and how to assign them. And the same. This is the these are the slides for the for how to configure a visual data stream. Um, I did not talk about the images or the QR or barcode. I will do that in the next demo for the tracker program. We saw the date picker and the radio button, and we didn't see the autocomplete. Uh, autocomplete, if you put autocomplete render in a text, what it will do is that the app will remember the values that have been entered by the user. And then, uh, uh, like, Prefill, not prefill, but suggest options the next time. So this is for when you are recording locations, but you don't have a drop down, you don't have an option set, and you want to make sure the typing is uh, is correct, the spelling. Sorry. So you, here you have the information on the rendering types, and then we will see the image and the QR code in the next one. So let's go to the tracker programs. The first thing we see in the tracker program is the search screen. So what are we seeing here? The attributes that are marked as searchable in the program. And then here we have a list in this case because the program is configured as display front page list. If you don't tick here, it's not going to display anything and it's going to apply the search configuration number of attributes required, etc., that you have uh, on your server. What we are displaying here is either the picture, if available, or the the, capi the first capital letter, the first letter of the first attribute, or the icon for the tracked entity type, in that order. <clears throat> so this is how you configure the searchable in the program, and then for the attributes that you want to be displayed in the card, you need to mark them as display in list, and we will show the first three, and then if you want to see more that are marked as displaying list, the user can expand the card to see more. Now, this little icon here uh, is telling us that this user is enrolled in another program as well. So this is just to give an overview of the patient in the facility and in how many programs it uh, he or she is enrolled. Something interesting also in this screen is that you can change the program here or you can move a level up and search across all tracked entity types. So when you move to the all person, in this case is a tracked entity type, then the attributes are going to change and they are going to be the ones that are searchable for that um, tracked entity type. That's important. And then another interesting thing or that is not, uh, it's a bit controversial, <laughs> I would say, is that we need to search to add a tracked entity type, a tracked entity instance, sorry. So in the other screens, this button was a plus because you can directly enter. For the, for the tracker program, you need to search first to prevent a bit uh, the duplicates. The good news, and I'm gonna enter one, uh, one tracked entity instance now, is that if I search, let's say patient four, it's a female and lives here with me. Now I search. So the search is telling me your search criteria didn't return any result. Please revise your criteria or enroll a new person. Okay, so now I can enroll a new person. Again, I have to choose the date. Enrollment date in this case. Oh, and you saw it, it said registration date, that's the label. So enrolling date, incident date, enrollment date, incident date, all those are picking the labels from the server configuration. And, uh, and now I'm enrolling this patient and here is where you see, this is how the images work. So let's take a picture. Okay, 
I wanted to take a picture of this little one. Thank you. Okay, um, this, here you see how a text that is configured as QR rendering type will be seen in the UI. So I can type a text directly if I know the code or I can read it. So I'm gonna use a, a sample card, an example. Okay, so now I have assigned the UI to this person, the, sorry, the ID to this person. And you can see that the fields that I completed in the search are pre-populated here. So it's a search, but it's a first step for a registration. Let's take it like that. <laughs> and you see all that I, what I collected was there. So we can save it now. Oh, I'm missing the age. Okay, this is how we handle the um, mandatory fields. So I think this one is five. And save. Okay, and it's taking me to the first stage. This is because it's configured like that in the server, like auto-generate event and uh, and uh, display right after registration. But if we go to this stage, mm -hmm. it's auto-generate zero days from start, open data entry form after enrollment. So I didn't have to create this event. So this is a regular, this looks exactly the same than the events data entry because it's it's actually we are entering a program and you have seen already the rendering types. So I don't think we need to do more here. It's exactly the same. There are no mandatory fields. I can just finish. And I want to show you an example of a barcode. So let's see here, I, we didn't see in the program um, how it was configured. So I'm going to not to change this. And then let's go to the enrollment detail, not to the attributes. So here you see how this local case ID, local case ID is rendered as QR code. And then if we go to one of the program stages in the lab results, we have one data element rendered as barcode the lab sample ID. So let's let's have a look at that in the app. So to have QR codes or, or barcodes, what you need to do is to set the rendering type as QR or barcode, and they need to be of value type text. So I think, yeah, it is here. And it works exactly the same. We have another example here. So it's as simple as that. Um, what's the difference between using it in an attribute or in a data element? If you use it in an attribute, let's clean this. If you use it in an attribute and you mark it as searchable, you can use it for identifying a patient quicker. Just by reading the QR code. So I used it twice, it's not unique, sorry. <laughs> That's the difference between using it in a, if you use it in a data element, it will store it, it will read the code and store it, but we cannot use it for searching. So let's have a quick look at the dashboard. What are we seeing here? This is the overview of the patient. Here we can edit the attributes. So we have the enrollment data and the tract entity instance attributes. Um, here we have the status of the event. Here we can mark the patient to follow up. It will have an icon in the list. We will see later a little bit marked. And here we have the list of stages. We have two views for this. We will explain it uh, later when I explain this menu. Let's uh, move to the next one. So the next tab are the indicators. We don't have indicators in this program, program indicators. Jose will tell us more about program indicators later. He will also talk about relationships, but here is where we add the relationships. And then we can also add enrollment notes. These notes are at enrollment level. That has been added by this user. So let's explore. We have seen this. 
let's explore this menu. This menu is very interesting. In this menu, we can, if you have permissions, delete the track entity instance or the enrollment. And you can see the program enrollment. So this is taking you to a screen where you are going to see listed all the enrollments of this uh, org unit in, oh, sorry, of this tracked entity instance in active programs, or in which programs you could enroll uh, this patient as well, or the historic ones. If we had completed enrollments or canceled, they will be listed below the available to enroll. And we can also move to what we call the tracked entity instance dashboard. So here, if this person had more enrollments, they will be listed one after the other and I can navigate them from here. So I can move from one program to another by going to the program enrollment from the track entity. The next one is the show events timeline. This is to change the display of the events. So what we are seeing here, you see we have the four different stage, the stages. And then if I click on it, it's, it's telling me the events that are already registered for each stage. And to create a new one, I have to click here. You can schedule, add new or refer. That's just like in web. But if I change to the events timeline, it's going to list one event after the other. So it doesn't give me the overview of the different stages and how many events per stage. One view or the other uh, can be interesting depending on how is the program and how it is configured. So there is no better or worse for, but for this one that is that goes a bit in stages, we think this one is more intuitive. Also, if you have many uh, visits, um, it's more structured or organized, I would say. And then also here we can change the status of the event, sorry, of the enrollment. And I think this is it. We have seen the attributes, we have seen the enrollments. Yes, so we can move back to the dashboard. It's still searching, so I can clean the search. Here is where you clean the search. And you can see now that this track entity instance is marked to follow up. This is what happened with the, when I marked it. So the last thing, and, and I will uh, hand over to Jose after this. Um, I see 13 comments. I don't know, if, uh, Jose, if, if we should mention any. We're OK. Thank you. Um, are the filters. So I didn't talk about the filters, but we have filters in all screens of the app. In the home screen, filters and sorting. Home screen, data sets, events, tracker, and track entity instance. This table. Keep it as a reference, is telling you where a filter is available or not. Filter by date, event date or period for a data sets, enrollment date, or units, sync status, and enrollment status, event status, all those are depending on the domain where you are in the app at the moment. And then the last two, category combination and assigned to me, will be visible only when they are configured in the program. So the one that has more is the track entity, the tracker program. So let's let's open the filters here, but they work exactly the same everywhere. So we can, you know, you see here, we can search for filter. And this icon, you find it in the home screen, but just the, the options are different based on where you are. In the data set, everywhere. And this is for navigating your data. So let's let's explore this one, which is the most uh, the one that has all filters. The dates um, they all work the same. We offer some shortcuts for now, in the past, or in the future. So if you choose in the future, it's going to be searching on the due date for schedule events. So you can say, okay, how many of my track ten how many of my track entity instances need to come next week? And you will click here. The case registration date is the enrollment date. So it's, it's reading the, in this case, the label. So maybe the, the, the future doesn't make much sense here, but yeah. And you can also choose periods from two, or if you choose, if you say other, it's gonna ask for a specific date. Anytime is just not no filtering. The org unit is allowing you to either open and explore, and it's going, it's giving you your, your org units only. Or you can search if you have uh, many. 
and then sync status. Here we use the, um, the icons that we introduced before. You can see, okay, what is my what of my data is not synced, for instance, and I need to send or or what what create what had an error and I need to review. And then the enrollment status, how many of my patients are in an active enrollment or complete enrollment. The status of the events uh, in the enrollment. So for instance, how many of them have a visit pending or how many of them missed a visit? It will search in the events, even though we are listing track entity instances. And then they ask time to me, uh, this is quite new. We don't have any configured. Uh, we, we don't have any assigned, but now in event you can we, you can say that this event will be assigned to a user. So if you assign an event to a mobile user, then the mobile the user when he filters or she by assigned to me, he will see the track entity instances or events that he or she should pay attention to. We cannot assign events in the app for now. We we only have them available in the in the web. 